Now, police in the Armenian capital of Yerevan have detained dozens of people demanding that Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan resign. Tensions then remain high after the surrender of the breakaway region of Nagano-Karabakh to Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan saying earlier this week that it had halted its offensive after Armenian separatist forces in uh, the enclave agreed to a ceasefire. Here's what one activist had to say about uh, the Prime Minister in uh, Yerevan today. Have a listen. I know that this manipulator is an idiot who has ruined relations with everyone and has made it so that Armenia has no one to help. But that doesn't mean anything. We are still here. We will fight. And we won't let him ruin Armenia. And we won't give away Nagorno-Karabakh. They're fighting for it. He won't be able to do it. And this idiot government needs to understand that they are also Armenian. Well, look, we can unpack uh, some of the details on the situation for you. I'm joined now by Tallinn Papazian. She's a senior lecturer at uh, Sciences Po in Aix-en-Provence. Uh, Tallinn, great to have you with us on France 24 this evening. Uh, you will have heard from that activist there during these protests in uh, Yerevan, anger, uh, disappointment ultimately at the Prime Minister. Give us some context, uh, Tallinn. Walk us through uh, why these demonstrators at least are so disappointed with Nikol Pashinyan. Well, there is immense anger, of course, frustration, sadness, uh, denial also, because uh, Nagorno-Karabakh has been a, a very important element uh, of Armenian national identity for the past decades and more than decades, centuries. Um, so, uh, of course, it is uh, very easy for um, the opposition to sort of uh, play on the emotions of the people and take them to the streets and you know, among those protesters, you also have refugees from Nagorno-Karabakh that left Nagorno-Karabakh during the 2020 war, so the previous um, major episode uh, of, uh, uh, of conflict. Uh, that was in, in 2020, sorry. So uh, this opposition uh, is playing, uh, is uh, manipulating even the emotions of the people. But, you know, one has to observe that they're not coming up with any alternative. Um, there is no program, there is no roadmap. Um, so, uh, you know, let's let's see what happens in the next I few mean, days. Let, let's stay with the, the, the Prime Minister, Talin. Uh, he was, mm -hmm. I mean, you made reference there to the first 2020 war, and there was some popularity uh, just before that of Pashinyan. Uh, why is he losing popularity uh, for some uh, in Armenia? Well, he is losing popularity precisely because uh, um, the, the Nagorno-Karabakh issue is a very important, emotionally important uh, issue for the Armenians. And Nagor the Nagorno-Karabakh uh, issue is now over. And uh, Armenians who have lived in Nagorno-Karabakh for millennia will basically most probably uh, have to leave uh, entirely that, that region in the next 24, 48 hours, nobody really knows because there is very scarce information coming out from the coming out uh, the enclave um, for the last 48 hours. So anger is uh, 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 is explainable. Uh, it's understandable. Pashinyan was very popular for uh, his Velvet Revolution, for democratization of Armenia, for his anti-corruption program, uh, but. This issue of Nagorno-Karabakh has a very high potential for, destabiliz for destabilization. One of the things that Pashinyan has, does, has done rather is criticize Russia and said, look, you know, they're not supporting us enough. There are others that say, look, you know, Russia is essentially occupied with what's going on uh, in Ukraine. What do you make of that dynamic there, that kind of back and forth uh, between Armenia and Russia? Well, the fact that Russia has not supported and has indeed not fulfilled the obligation that it has towards Armenia, not towards Nagorno-Karabakh, but towards Armenia as an ally, that's a fact. Last year, you know, just one year ago, Armenia was attacked on its sovereign territory by Azerbaijan. Azerbaijani forces advanced on Armenian territory. Uh, Armenia asked Russia for assistance, uh, as it had the right to do so by bilateral security treaties between the two partners. And Russia bluntly said, no, we will not come to help. So the crisis between Armenia and Russia has very objective reasons uh, and understandable reasons. Um, but another, you know, just to get a picture, and you will understand everything, if I tell you that along the protesters that chant, Pashinyan is a traitor and Pashinyan should resign, you have other protesters and other protests 
that are going on in front of the Russian embassy and people there are chanting, we want a sovereign and independent Armenia. So I think if I tell you that, you understand the whole picture. Armenia is at the crossroads. On the one hand, uh, the Nagorno-Karabakh issue, conflict, whatever uh, for Armenians is lost. And that is a very big thing to digest. And we don't know how Armenia is going to get out of that, how Armenia is going to process that. On the other hand, what is really at stake in the larger picture is the sovereignty and independence of Armenian states. I mean, I hear you talking about the deep divisions within the country and both sides uh, having ultimately their say. This has led to a great deal of disinformation, uh, we understand. Walk us through some of that. What's, what's been happening on that front, uh, Talene? Yes, you're right. Disinformation is indeed playing a very crucial role, uh, also because um, many of the uh, media that is run by the opposition in Armenia, the traditional opposition, the one that is not giving a roadmap, but, you know, asking for Pashinyan's uh, resignation, um, those channels are uh, very tightly linked to Russian media channels, to Russian business uh, um, networks, uh, to Russian politicians and money, to put it, you know, very shortly in uh, um, so, so, so this information runs, I would say, naturally from the Kremlin to Yerevan uh, and then even to the outside world. So, um, again, I'm simplifying for the sake of, you know, understanding a complex situation, uh, but that's definitely a big part of the answer on this information. OK, well, Talene, on that note of, of complexity, thanks very much for unpacking uh, some of the details of this for us. You're a senior lecturer at Sciences Po in Aix-en-Provence. Thank thanks you. for your time this afternoon, this evening. Thank, Thank you. you.